find more abundance with me. Always so founded and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. I came so you can have life more abundance, life more abundance with me. Always so founded and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. Spirit of the Lord is flowing through me, proclaiming the good news to all in me. Welcome to Z Church, everyone. We are delighted you have joined us today. If you are on the Zoom platform, or watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, please leave a comment and tell us where you're from. Please remember to mute your microphone during service if you are on the Zoom platform. Communion will be served, so please prepare your communion elements, bread and juice, so you can participate. We will have the opportunity to honor and worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. So prepare your hearts to give unto the Lord. Stay tuned for Afterglow, a special time of fellowship immediately following service. Steve, would you pray for us? Thank you very much, Paula. Um, we do need to record the session. And uh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Uh, dear God, I just wanted to thank you today. Thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to us and just to operate through our body, Lord. We pray that you prepare for the ones that are going to be listening to this message or take part of the service either right now or later, Lord. Anoint them. Give them peace. We want to thank you for that, Lord. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sharon? Thank you, Steve. Amen. Our, our scripture reading today is John 1, 14 through 17. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Catherine, will you lead us in worship? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Sharon. We're going to sing a song hopefully many of you are familiar with. It's sung around the world, I believe, uh, during Christmas time. It's called, Oh, Come All You Faithful, and then we'll um, be able to just worship with, Oh, Come, Let Us Adore Him. Oh, come all ye Christ the Lord 
O sing choirs of angels, O sing choirs of angels, sing in exaltation, O sing all ye citizens of heaven above. worthy for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy for he alone is worthy, is worthy. Christ God, hallelujah, Amen. wonderful. Amen. Amen. It, is my, it is my honor and my privilege to introduce our pastors, uh, Larry and Loretta Huggins. They are bold, unashamed voices in the wilderness saying to prepare the way for the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Thank you, please. Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. Praise God. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. What a great service! And I tell you, the the uh, the pre prayer, uh, the pre service prayer was just amazing. Uh, prophetic words from Christine and Paula and Terry, and uh, wow, it was just great. I am pumped. We're going to have a great service. Listen, all Amen. of you Facebook Praise friends, YouTube friends, and. Twitch friends, we love you and uh, can't wait to get into the service. Today, we have a very special minister all the way from Barcelona, Spain, <laughs> Pastor Loretta Huggins. Hello, Pastor hey. Huggins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Praise God. What a wonderful pre-prayer. I wasn't online, but because you have your uh, computer on, Pastor, in your office, I could hear it. It was just a prayer was filling our apartment and I'll praise God for the words that came through uh, Christine and then came through Paula and then the spiritual song through uh, Catherine. It was just amazing how God is just using his people. And uh, thank you so very much. It's so beautiful to see everyone. So praise God, praise God. And Joseph, thank you. This is the first time Joseph introduced us. Yay! Yeah, and it's good to have uh, Anna Marie and Javier Anna with Marie. us from Lima. Yeah, and their Bob baby Lucas girl from is in Texas, yeah. and uh, Gail is coming on. Our dear old friend Gail from from uh, Bakersfield. Yes, and of course we have our elders, and thank God for Elder Joy that she is getting better and better. So yeah, praise God for, for that. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And you know. We have friends here in Barcelona who don't necessarily profess the things of God, and yet they have been asking us to pray for them. Isn't that yeah. wonderful? And you are a part of that Z team. You really, really are. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing that our friends here in Barcelona have been asking us for prayer. And they've been saying things like, uh, I'm blessed and, you know, you're blessed. And they're learning the lingo. You know, and as uh, was it Jesus had told uh, someone that they weren't far from the kingdom of God. Yeah. So, you know, you know I, was just, we're... I, was, I was just thinking about that. Not far from the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Well, Pastor, do you want me to start? And, I want uh, you to jump is, right in and bless well, us, and uh, I'm here yes. if you need me. Yes, Pastor. Well, I know everyone has prayed, and we had a beautiful prayer uh, and scripture reading. That was a great scripture reading, uh, Pastor Sharon, and praise God. So we thank God for that. Well, today I am going to take my time. Now, I always promise that I will, but um, if I get a little excited, you know, well, I'll just jump up, run around the table, and then come back and sit down and continue to talk. We know you're Pentecostal. I truly am Pentecostal. I mean, I'm Church of God in Christ. I'm like way back. You know, uh, we didn't have church unless we jumped all over the chairs. You know, not that we're crazy and wild. It's just that we were jubilant and happy and gave praise to God. We were like King David. We were, we were short of being King David. We didn't dance out of our clothes. David did. We didn't. We, were, we, we had our limits there. So praise God for that. But you know what? It make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for he is good. I have to tell you today, I'm going to talk about the reigning grace. Reigning All grace. Right. Did I say that? Reigning grace. Now, I know that you are all going, yes, I yes. reign in life through one Christ Jesus. This is true. This is true. However, I want you to stay with me because you're going to see something about reigning grace. You're going to see, I hope that I can convey to you an algebraic expression. Now, for all of our mathematicians out there and engineers and so forth, uh, I'm thinking of Javier especially. He says, I love math. Now, I'm going to tell off on Javier. He says, I love people not so much, but I love math. <laughs> <laughs> people are hard to understand, but math makes sense. He says, I love math. And he says, um, he says math is because it's so exact. Well, he does love all of us. Javier is a man of love. But, you know, he was just talking about his passions in life. And so praise God. So I want to show you what it means to reign in life through the one Christ Jesus, that reigning grace in your life. I believe that um, whoever is putting up the scriptures have the scriptures for me. I will be looking away because I have a tiny little scripture here. I didn't do my notes, so I don't have the big print, you know, tickering across the screen. However, praise God, you are going to stay with me. And here it is. Number 17 of the fifth chapter of Romans. Romans 5, 17. I'm going to read about four passages of this chapter. Listen. For if by one man's offense, and I'm reading from the Phillips Modern Translation. For if one man's offense meant that men should be slaves to death all their lives. It is a far greater thing that through another man, Jesus Christ, men by their acceptance of his more sufficient grace and righteousness should live their lives victoriously. Now, I'll read it in the King James for those of you who are more familiar with it. It says, for, it says, for if by one man's offense, death reigned over by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by the one Jesus Christ. Now, I need you to pay attention to something very interesting in that passage of scripture. It says, if right. you have received the abundance of grace and the gift 
of righteousness. Then you will reign in life through the one Christ Jesus. So you're, I'm sure all of you, I, I included, I will say, yes, I've been made righteous. Yes, I've received the gift of grace. So Amen. therefore, I'm reigning in life. Woohoo! Look at my muscles. I'm Hallelujah. reigning in life through the one Christ Jesus. Stop. Hold the press. Have you often wondered, my girlfriend and I, we are, <laughs> I won't share what we talk about, but we are just too real with one another. <laughs> it's like something happens, she'll say to me or I'll say to her, you know what? I'm feeling a little something right now. And it's not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we are honest with one another. You know, we do that. But at the same time, when we talk about it, we revert back to a point, a reference point, a, 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 a point that is our base. And that is the grace of God. Yet, she and I would both admit to you that there are times we're wondering, God, you say that, and I'll just talk about myself, God, you say that I'm to reign in life through the one Christ Jesus. Well, if reigning, if I'm reigning, then I should be the one in control. How many of you have in late of late time felt like you're not quite in control? Just you don't have to raise your hand. You can raise it where uh, I can't see it on Zoom, okay? But just be honest. And you're saying, well, wait a second. The word of God is true. And I'll read it again for you. And this time, I'll read it in the Jerusalem Bible. It reads, if it is certain that death reigned over everyone as the consequence of one man's fall, it is even more certain that one man, Jesus Christ, will cause everyone to reign in life who receives a free gift and that he does not deserve. Excuse me, I did not read that correctly. And it is certain that will receive to a God, Christ, Jesus Christ will cause everyone to reign in life who receives the free gift and that he does not deserve of being made righteous. In other words, you have received a gift that you didn't deserve. Now, to stay with me, don't get upset, stay with me, that you didn't deserve. And yet, it says Jesus will cause everyone, everyone who has ever been made righteous, everyone who has ever received the abundance of grace, everyone who's ever confessed Jesus as Lord, Jesus, Hallelujah. it says here, will cause you to reign in life through the one Christ Jesus. And he's not talking about the sweet by and by. He's talking about the right now and now. Right I know now. some people call it Amen. the nasty now and now, but you know what? You can have what you say. I'm going to say the sweet now and now, the victorious now and now, the the I'm the winner now and now. But sometimes, you know, even the scripture says, you know, God has put everything under Jesus' feet. And yet it doesn't appear that everything is under feet. Sometimes you feel like I'm under somebody's foot and doesn't feel like Jesus. <laughs> Let's just be real. <laughs> it's true. It's good. That's right. It's true. And he says, but even if it doesn't look like it, even if it doesn't feel like it, even if, you know, it just there is no hope, nowhere, whatever the case may be. He said that God has put everything under Jesus feet. And even if it doesn't look like it in the natural, what we do see is Jesus. Amen. Amen. What we do see is Jesus. Jesus, Preacher. full of grace and truth. Jesus, full of grace and truth. Jesus, full of grace and truth. I know I'm preaching Faith 101. And you're saying, I have heard that before. Well, if you heard it before, let's do it. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. I'm just saying. <laughs> I can see my girlfriend laughing at me. <laughs> I'm just saying, yes, yes, yes. You know, I have to say, and my husband, I just want to say, honey, 
Thank you so much. You're one of the wonderful husbands who put the toilet seat down. Took me years to give, for us to get there, but you do it now. And I am so, I appreciate you. Hugs, love, and everything to you. You know, but I heard one big name preacher talking about apparently the wives. And he says, you know, it's no big deal uh, about the toilet seat. And I was thinking if it's no big deal, then do it. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> You're preaching if it's to the no choir. big deal. <laughs> Keep it real, Just Pastor. Do it. <laughs> Thank You're you, preaching Mary. to the choir. <laughs> I'm just saying. And that's the same way with grace. I've heard this before. I've heard this before. Well, if you've heard it before, do it. Amen. Oh, but maybe you're missing one side of the algebraic expression. Because one of the rules, if the main rule of algebra, and I'm speaking way over my head because, you know, math was one of those things like, Jesus, work with me, please. <laughs> I have to tell you that on one side of the algebraic expression, you have to have the balance on the opposite side, on either side of the equal sign. Right. Whatever operations you do on, on the right side, you're going to have to do the same type of operation on the left side. Now, they will have different values, perhaps. You know, the variables will change. Y, Z, whatever the case may be. All of that may change. But the operation has to be the same. Are you following me? Reigning grace. Yeah, that's good. Let that's me good. keep reading here. Stay with this. Reigning grace, it reads, and it continues to say, to live victoriously. I'm reading from the Phillips. Woohoo! I tell you, I'm feeling the effects of that free prayer. Wow, my Lord. We see then that as one act of sin exposed the whole race of men to God's judgment and condemnation, so that one act of perfect righteousness presents all men freely acquitted in the sight of God. Boom. You know, it's always amazing to me that we have one side of the equation. Oh my God, we are dealing with the fall. Oh my God, it was because of Adam. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Adam what he's thinking. When I get to heaven, I don't care where Adam is. I'm just going to be so happy I'm there. I'm going to be like rolling, screaming, yelling. And you know, Adam, you do you, boo, and I'll do me. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't care. Because what he did brought us all into sin. But it says, if one man brought us all into sin, then the act of Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God, what he did is much more greater yeah, yeah, amen. than what Adam did. And he made us all righteous. It's on the, it's the same, same action. One did something and, and affected everyone. Another did something and affected everyone. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Raining grace. So oh, I promise you it's going to stay calm. I'm going to try to be like Paula. All right, go ahead and oh, preach praise you. the Lord. Um, <laughs> she's going to beat me up when she sees me. <laughs> go ahead. Preach it, sister. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If by one man's offense, we were all brought into sin, how much more, how much more the grace or the act of obedience did Jesus bring us all into righteousness? I'm going to give you an algebraic equation that's going to be a game changer. It's going to change how you reign in life. It's going to change how you, the, the outcome. It's going to change how you see things. Yeah, I'm so confident of that. I mean, as Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither life nor death, nothing 
can separate me from the love of God. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what people are saying. I don't care. Well, I did care a little bit when I was locked up in the immigration, but I got over it and I said, God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Thanks, God. God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just Thank keeping you. it real. Just keeping it real. There was a part of me. I just wanted to cry. I wanted to throw myself on the floor, but it was just way too dirty. I thought I'm going to have to cry. At it. I, I was like a little kid. You know how little kids, they hurt themselves like 10 blocks from the house and they walk home and the minute they open the door, ah! I had to do a delay cry on that one. <laughs> I don't know. Praise God. I'm just blessed. Hallelujah. And can you continue to read? We see then that as one act, of sin exposed the whole race of men to God's judgment and condemnation. So one act of perfect righteousness presents all men freely acquitted in the sight of God. You know what Pastor Larry says when 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 God repeats something, it's kind of his way of saying, not kind of, but it's his way of saying, look at this, look at this, you know. Sometimes we get so tired of people repeating things, but look, within three verses, I've repeated, if by one man's offense, and if by one man's obedience, how many times has it been said here? And it continues, it says, if by one man's uh, uh, obedience, place all men, that were under the threat of, of one man's disobedience placed all men under the threat of condemnation. But one man's obedience has the power to, pre to present all men righteous before God. That's been repeated about four times and it continues to read. Ooh, this is the part that I'm going to help you with. Now we find that the law keeps slipping into the picture to the point to point the vast extent of sin, yet through sin, yet though sin is shown to be wide and deep. Now we find that the law keeps slipping into the picture to point the vast extent of sin. Though sin is shown to be wide and deep, thank God his grace is wider and deeper still. Woo, that should oh, be enough yeah. for everyone oh, to yeah. holler, scream, Ooh, jump. Lord. My Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. Here it is. We got the equation. We're looking at what the devil did. Oh, the fall. Oh, it's, you know, God sent me into this, this uh, church. It's it's difficult. I got a pastor. I, I heard more pastors talk about where they pastor is one of the hardest places. You know, I'm, I'm, it's like every place in the world is competing to be the hardest place to for the pastor. <laughs> I can see a little Bob saying, yeah. <laughs> I heard My that too. Goodness. Well, think about Jesus. He had to come here when no one was living for God. He had to go to hell. Now, that's pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, I know a lot of people don't believe Jesus went to hell. I know. Well, you know what? You do you, I do me. That's what I believe. <laughs> that's how I see it. As Pastor Larry said, as far as down deep, deep, deep Jesus went, that's how far on the other side he's taken us. If he is now and he is exalted and sitting at the right hand of God, then he had to go down to the lowest part. Amen. Cover Amen. it all. Whew. Hallelujah. Awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it continues to read. Whew. It continues to read. The whole, you know, I told you it was a game changer. And the Bible is backing me up here. The whole outlook changes. Uh, uh, I like my laugh. The whole outlook changes. Sin used to be the master of men and in the end handed them over to death. 
Now, grace is the ruling factor, and its purpose is making men right with God, and its end is to bring them into eternal life through Jesus Christ. Let me read it in the Jerusalem Bible. You're going to just yeah. love this. Okay, it goes like this. What it reads, when the law came, it was to multiply the opportunities of failing. <laughs> Oh, why does anyone want to live under the law? And it says in the third no chapter, idea. is it the third chapter? No idea. Third or fourth chapter of Romans, it says, and this is what the law says. No one is righteous. No one is this. No one does that. You've got poison on your lips. And people think, well, that's just said no one's righteous. No, Paul is saying this is what the law says about you, if you're not going to live by grace, this is what the law is going to say about you. You'll, it'll never be satisfied. It's like a mate who's never satisfied with whatever you do. I don't care for male or female. N children, never satisfied. Or parents, never satisfied. Friends, you can be a friend to the end, never satisfied. And the minute you do one little offense, Boom, out the door you go. That's the law. But it says here, it continues to read. Ooh, ooh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just hyperventilating. I'm just excited. It says to multiply the opportunities of failing, but however great the number of sins have been committed, grace was greater. And so just as sin reigned wherever there was death, listen to this verbiage, listen to how it's worded. When sin reign wherever there was death, so grace will reign to bring eternal life thanks to the righteousness wherever righteousness is, praise God, that comes through Jesus Christ. Here's the yeah. equation. Uh, uh, here's the equation. If you want to uh, reign in life through the one Christ Jesus. Now, this is a good ex uh, algebra expression. If you want to reign in life through the one Christ Jesus, then you're going to have to let the grace of God reign in your life. Hallelujah. Come on, amen. Preach it. If you are going to reign in life, if you're going to have victory, because it just said that if you have received the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace, you will reign in every situation. That's what it says. I'm talking to me first. I'm not preaching to you like you got to do it. I'm telling myself this. I've been telling myself this since I knew I was going to bring this message. My Lord, I even had to ask myself, what do you really believe? Do you really believe that Jesus paid for everything and that you are made righteous? Yes, we all believe that because of Adam, we are all been made sinners. Uh, we seem to don't believe the fact that because of Jesus, we're all made righteous. Hallelujah. We need to put Praise a more stock to what Jesus did. And then it says, you know, um, the, the mathematicians, uh, Paul is an economist, so she understands this. You know, death completed sin. I mean, complemented sin. That's the word I wanted to use, complement. But this word complement is spelled with an E, not with an I. You know, complement spelled with an I means you look great, you look good, love your dress, love you, call me, mean it, and all the other stuff. But that's not this word. This word is spelled with an E, and it means a completer. A completer. Death will com wow. complete sin what the end of sin is death what is the end of grace righteousness hallelujah, hallelujah. glory praise to god. god hallelujah Amen. glory to god mm -hmm. hallelujah if Amen. you Preach have it. received the grace of god then the end of any situation in your life is grace is righteousness wow. amen Wow. Amen. You want to reign in life, then you need to let grace reign in your life because you have been made right with God. Amen.
Amen. If you want to reign in life, if you want victory in your life, then I'm going to say it as it said in Galatians. Stop frustrating the grace of God. The reason we are not, I'm speaking to myself first. The reason we don't have the reigning and all of the victories we want, because we frustrate, we frustrate, we frustrate the grace of God. Oh, the devil, you know, well, this is, you know, I blew it. I didn't make a right decision. I I, I should have, I should have, could have, would have, whatever the case may be. You know, you're saying it. it I, and maybe if I had kept my big mouth shut. Well, you didn't. Okay, <laughs> just going to be real. You didn't keep your big mouth shut. Now what? If we are the seed of Abraham, if we are uh, the children of Abraham, then it's who Abraham was made righteous before he became a Jew. Don't believe Very it, good. read the third chapter of Romans. Yeah, you're right. Before he became a Jew, he was made righteous. And then God told him, this is all in this book, Romans. And then God told him, said, I will bless you. I will make you uh, uh, great. I will give you children through Sarah. He did everything God told him not to do. And yet God called him righteous. Yet God uh, said he was blessed. You know why? And if you read it, it says this. Because he believed God, because he believed, what did he believe God? He believed God's testimony. That's how we reign. That's how we overcome. We overcome. We're world overcomers because we believe the testimony of God about Jesus Christ. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. And because he was obedient to Christ, I don't care how many times I blow it. I don't care how many times my big mouth open, all kinds of words come flying out of my mouth. I don't care how many times I have a bad attitude. I don't care. It's not that I have a right to sin. It's a. It's that I have a right to reign in life and be forgiven. Yes, hallelujah. Man, if you want to reign in life, if you want to reign in life, you're going to have to stop frustrating the grace of God. I'll say it again. If you want reigning grace, you see, I told you it was going to be a different type of message. I keep my word. I keep my word. If you want, Loretta Mary Huggins, if you want to reign in life through the one Christ Jesus, because you have received the gift of righteousness, you have received the gift of righteousness, you have received the gift of righteousness, you have received the gift of righteousness. And the abundance of grace. This grace, this grace needs to reign in your life. And then grace will say when you, when you're, you're, uh, I'm talking about myself, you, 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 you you talked out a turn. You you should have kept your mouth closed when you, uh, uh, when you, but you opened it. You should have uh, spoke when you kept your mouth closed. You should have went right when you went left. You should have sat down when you stood up. I'm just saying. You should have wore yellow, but you wore red or blue or green, whatever the case may be. You should have done this business deal or you should have done that business deal or you should have taken this relationship or you should have gone here or you should have lived there or you should have this. I don't know what you're dealing with, but what I do know is that grace, because it's the same grace that God put on Abraham, he blew it left and right, and he was still blessed. And that's the grace, that's the righteousness that's in our life. And Jesus became a curse for us that the blessings of Abraham might be on us. Amen. 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 That we would receive the promised spirit. Pastor Larry. Yes, my dear. Take it. I'm done. 
What a great message. Did everybody like that? Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Praise amen. God. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Very good. And, and here's what I'm taking away. If I want to truly reign in life, I, I must let grace reign in my life. I've got to accept the grace of God. We don't reign by works or good deeds. We reign by grace. That's a, we need to hear this today, Pastor Loretta. Thank you. And I want to say to all of our friends who are watching and listening, maybe you grew up in a church. Maybe you grew up being taught that you got you to gotta cross all the T's and dot all the I's and you always have to be, you know, goody, goody, two shoes and pious and holy. And you found out, you know, that you, you kept making mistakes. Here's the message today that what Jesus did totally overrules any mistakes you made. <laughs> it, it totally eclipses any mistakes that you made. So we have to celebrate what Jesus did for us and uh, accept the grace of God in our lives. If you have not accepted Jesus and his grace, the unmerited favor that he has for you, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I pray that you that you will mean this in your heart and say it with your mouth. And let's all repeat this prayer together. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly, Heavenly Father. 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 Thank you for sending Jesus to suffer in my place. Thank you for, Thank sending, you for sending, sending Jesus, Jesus to suffer in my place. In my place. I could oh. never have been holy enough. I can never, 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 been been never have been good enough. I can never, never, never have been, been good, good, enough. Enough. good enough. But it's not about what I did or did not do. But it's, it's not, not about, about what, what I did, I did, did, I did, did what I do. Do. No. It's about what Jesus did for me. It's, it's about, about what Jesus, Jesus for me, did for me. Did for me. For me. And right now, by faith, Right, right, right now, now by faith. faith, I receive the gift of righteousness. I receive the gift of righteousness. righteousness. The gift of right standing with God. The gift of right standing with God. Jesus has brought me into the Father's family. Jesus has brought me into the Father's family. And I receive the gift of grace. And I, I received, received the, the gift of grace. of grace. I'm saved by grace through faith. I am I'm saved, saved, saved by grace through faith. Through faith. Not by works. Not, not, not by, by works. Work. I'm ready to reign in life by grace. I'm, I am I'm ready, ready to, to reign, reign in life, 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 life by grace. By grace. Amen. Now listen, if you said that prayer, let me tell you something. You have just given the devil a heart attack. You have just given him a meltdown and a and a a, a, a mental break. If you just said that and, and believed it, because the devil has worked so hard to put you under condemnation to convince you that you're not good enough, you're not holy enough, you're smart enough, and you have flipped this around. And you said, it's not about me and what I failed to do. It's about Jesus and what he succeeded to do. Praise God. We've got our eyes on Jesus today. Now, listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, uh, write me, Pastor Larry at zchurch.life and say, I prayed the prayer. Praise God. And we want to help you with your walk with God. Uh, thank God for grace. Thank you. Thank God. Pastor Loretta, thank you for for explaining it where we can understand it. What a good message. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, now, we're gonna have, message. now we're going to have communion. And um, if you're prepared for communion, you just need a little morsel of bread or something, a little bit of juice. And we're going to thank God for the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. He, Pastor uh, Larry, Pastor yes, Larry may I uh, just ask you to... Just one more thing, and you can judge it, but you and I already have had this conversation, and I think that everyone, our Z team, our amazing Z team family, and anyone who's listening to this program, 
I think this communion should be the time when Pastor Larry leads us in this communion, that you make it a definite, a, you become persuaded that it doesn't matter what, and this is in that same book, Romans, as Paul said, I am persuaded that nothing can separate me from God's love. Nothing. Righteousness is the completer of grace. Amen. Well, compliment. Uh, and so, go ahead, Pastor. No, um, go ahead. No, I'm continue. finished. I'm fi no, I'm finished. All right, finished. all right. Um, I think about this a lot, but when Jesus did what he and the Father decided to do, they didn't ask us for our opinion. We weren't brought into some sort of a discussion about what Jesus would do or not do. Jesus purposed to go to the cross without asking us for our permission. He purposed to pay for our sins without asking us for permission. He didn't ask us what we thought about it. He did it because this is what needed to be done to bring us into right standing with God. And Jesus did this of his own free will, knowing ahead of time what that meant. He would go through horror. He would go through pain. He would go through punishment. He would go through all the horrid details of our lives from beginning to end and pay the penalty for the utmost sin, the last farthing. And he did that without asking us. His body was broken for us. He did this without asking for us. His blood was shed for us. He did this without asking for us asking us what we thought about it. I would have said, no, don't do it <laughs> to my own detriment. I would have said, please, it's, uh, I'm not worth it. But he saw something in me and he saw something in you that he believed was worthwhile. And I want you to accept the fact that Jesus saw something in you before you saw anything in you. He believed in you before you believed in you. And he transferred his relationship with the Father to you of his own free will. When we have this communion, we're celebrating the grace of God. We're celebrating the favor of God. His body was bruised for you. His blood was shed for you. Let's do this together. Heavenly Father, we hold up the bread, the broken body of Jesus. He did this so that we could be whole. He loves us, and he gave himself for us. And as we partake of this, we're saying thank you. Yes and amen. Thank you for doing what we would have never agreed for you to do, but you did it anyway. That means you love us with an unconditional love. Let's eat together. Likewise, his blood was shed for us. He didn't consult us. He did it because it had to be done to secure our redemption. This is grace. This is a cup of grace. It's a cup of mercy. And as we partake of it, we are allowing grace to reign in our lives by Christ Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. I want to say this again because uh, here's what I'm taking away from this message, Pastor Loretta, that if we don't allow grace to reign in our lives, then we can't reign in life. Uh, which is which is so contrary to what most people have been taught in church. They've been taught if they make failures, if they make mistakes, if they fall short, then they're gonna they're gonna experience failure in their life. But thank you for bringing out the story of Abraham, <laughs> because Abraham. You know, if you really read the story, he kept making mistakes, but he was still declared righteous because he believed God. 
So thank God we're children of Abraham and we're ruling and reigning in life through grace. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's hear, let's everybody celebrate the grace of God right now. Thank God. Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Mercy Hallelujah. Over God. The grace of God is everlasting. Thank you. I am a prophet of grace. I believe in grace. I'm thankful for grace. And uh, the more the older I get, the more I find out about grace, the more I appreciate what God has done for us. The New Testament is a covenant of grace. Uh, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Thank you, Pastor Loretta, for preaching the truth about grace to us today. Now, in uh, just a moment, we're going to worship God with our tithes and our offerings, and we're going to encourage you to participate. And then we're going to have a, a couple of announcements and then go into our afterglow. We're going to have a great time in the afterglow. If you have any questions or comments or testimonies or anything to share, uh, our, our, uh, our afterglow is just a freewheeling fun time. So stick around for it. But I want to talk to you about next week. Uh, next Saturday's Christmas. And we're not going to have a, a regular Z Church service. We're just going to open up our home here in Spain. And anyone who wants to come visit us online, we're going to have a Christmas communion together. We're going to share the blessings of Christmas together and just have some fellowship. So it's going to be a great time. It's, it's not going to be a, a real formal service. Uh, not that we're ever formal. We're pretty we're pretty relaxed around here. But uh, come be with Pastor Loretta and me on Christmas if you can. Um, you don't have to stay the whole hour. If you want to just pop in for a couple of minutes and, and then uh, pop back out, that's fine as well. But we're going to be here and we're going to be online. So if you have a few minutes to be with us on Christmas Day, uh, we invite you to be with us. Christmas with the Huggins. Hallelujah. And uh, so, uh, Steve, let's worship God with their tithes and offerings. Well, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. And thank you, Pastor Loretta, for the, the, great, for the great message. I think we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, during the afterglow. Let's uh, move on with our tithe and offering today. Uh, the tithe offering verse comes from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter verse 9, 7 through 8. New King James. So let each, <clears throat> excuse me. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God, lo for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. You might be having an internal monologue. It was a good message, but why should I give? I would ask you to write down three things that you're grateful for. Excuse me. I will write down three things that you're grateful for, for at least 30 days straight. This will change your view of the world around you and your view, and your view of God. There's so many things that could be worse or go wrong in your life. But you will find that God has always protected and carried, carried you. It could be as simple as, thank you for this parking spot. Or thank you for keeping me safe on my way home. Trust me, if God doesn't that want you to have that, if, it, if God doesn't want you to have something, I all of a I didn't have such as a else parking to spot, you're not going to obtain it. Once you have cultivated the feeling of gratefulness, it will change the way you see and interact with the people around you. You also be a become a cheerful giver. You get to give, not you need or have to give. Then all grace, sufficiency, and abundance will abound in your life. Three things that you're grateful for. Try today. It will change your life. The giving information is on thechurch.live. God bless you as you give.
I do have a few announcements for you today. We invite you to visit our website, zchurch.life. If you go to the Divine Connections tab there, you can leave a prayer request. You'll see information about our various Zoe groups and how to get involved. And you can also contact us there if you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team. On the Z Church blog, you'll find faith building original content from our pastors, the Z team, and others. You're also invited to join Pastor Larry when he goes live on Facebook at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, Monday through Thursday. He's teaching to equip you for your good life. We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly. On Zoom, if you'd like to observe only, please stop your video and mute your microphone. If you're watching from Facebook and have a question, please let our moderator know, and they'll bring your question into the discussion. But first, we have a spotlight on Paula Flood. Hello, I'm Paula Flood. I am a member of Z Church and I'm also a member of Z Team. And my husband's name is Dr. Eugene Flood Jr. He is an economist and uh, he also loves music. We uh, live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and we are parents to two beautiful children, Christina Renee Flood. Maloney. She is married to David Maloney, and they are a beautiful young couple working hard and um, contributing great things to society. And we also have a son, Earl Scott Flood, who is a lawyer working on uh, Capitol Hill and doing great things for uh, our government and the society. And Gene and I are very, very proud of our children. In addition to being a, an economist, in addition to being a wife and a mom, there's me. And I love to paint. I love to draw. I think I can say I have enjoyed that since I was a young child. And now I have the, the quietness of my life that my kids are adults and out of the home, that I have time to um, do some of the things that I really enjoy. And I enjoy painting. And uh, I have taken paint classes um, for many years. When I was a student at Howard University in both the undergrad program and the graduate program, I studied the German language and my professor was Dr. Paul Logan. And I learned a lot from Dr. Logan. He taught this early morning 8 a.m. class. And once you entered that classroom, you could not speak anything but German. And he had this uh, energizing way of getting us going. So when you come into the class, he his hands and stomp his foot and point to you and that meant you were on whatever you did it had to be in German and so uh, I learned very early on that preparation was the key uh, and then whatever I said it had to be in German and whether I said it correctly or not he taught us to put forth who you are and when correction was given, take it and implement it. He suggested to me to apply for the Fulbright Hayes Fellowship. And um, I did, under his guidance. Ich bin Mitglied Z Church. Es ist eine interaktive Online-Gemeinschaft auf der Bibelbasis. Die von den Pastoren Larry und Loretta Huggins gegründet werden. Unser Ziel ist es, den Namen Jesus zu erheben und die gute Botschaft der Bibel zu verbreiten. Weitere Informationen finden Sie auf der Website The Church Life. Alle sind willkommen. Hello, 
I love that spotlight. I like to hear Paula speaking German. No, notice her voice goes up a couple of octaves. No, that is so true. It, it's a whole different thing. <laughs> I become a different person. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I was going to be on. I was shocked. <laughs> that was fun. Wow. I had, oh. uh, I had lunch with a German friend today. Uh, oh. his, name is, his name is Hubert Goff. And uh, he took a nasty fall, and he asked me to pray for him. So, you know, it's like Pastor Loretta said, uh, people know who to reach out to for prayer. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, let's um, move on to our afterglow. We can certainly discuss it uh, uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, well, I want to go ahead and discuss uh, what you've learned or what I've learned about Pastor Loretta's message, uh, especially like the, the righteous uh, part. Uh, Pastor Loretta emphasized, emphasized that you are righteous. And it just reminded me of it's what Jesus did on the cross that made us righteous. Yes. Well, let's say we, you know, I, I, I did something that I shouldn't have just maybe 10 minutes ago or maybe yesterday. That does not or that did not make me unrighteous. Mm -hmm. I am still righteous in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and just uh, that is just and with the, and the grace of God. I mean, in our in the equation, you know, it is not an equal to, but God's grace is always greater than the things I did. And mm -hmm. so that, I think to me, that has been a revelation. Yes, uh, Satan you know, or the devil could be whispering things in my ear that said, you did this. You're no longer in God, in God's good graces. That is so not true. So not true. And so that is, so you are always righteous because you, Jesus is your savior. And you're made a Jesus sacrifice, a Jesus grace or God's grace abounds. And you're no longer, you're no longer unrighteous. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I got away. Oh, that's my takeaway. I, I appreciate Pastor. Oh, I thank Pastor Lorna. For emphasizing that, you yeah, know, whatever good. I did wrong, yes, I all I have to do is uh, ask for forgiveness, and everything starts to fresh. He will no longer remember the sin that committed. And so, yeah, uh, doesn't um, mean that I could do it all the time. When he repents, it's one eighty. That I means you do a one eighty. You don't do that anymore. And so, let me uh, yeah, let me jump in here, Steve. Um, yes. You know, righteousness sounds like a real kind of a holy word, you know, righteousness, uh, always doing right. But what it really means is being in right relationship, being in relationship with God. I like what I like this saying. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. So Jesus has brought us into a relationship with the Father. Now, I'll give you an example. Then I'm going to. I'm going to do my best to just sit back and let everybody talk. But uh, Pastor Loretta will remember this. A few years ago, my son Jesse had a, a kind of a short-term relationship with a lady from Spain. She worked at the Spanish consulate in San Francisco. And oh, do he, I remember. <laughs> yeah, and he decided she wasn't the one, so he kind of pulled away. So she called me and she started to tell me that I had to tell Jesse that he had to change his ways and come back to her. And he had to, you know, modify his behavior. And I said, listen, I called her by her name. I said, Jesse's my son. I will always take his side. I will never take your side, whether he's right, wrong or indifferent. He's my son. 
and you're never going to turn me against my son. Amen. That's righteousness. Mm-hmm. That's good. Amen. That is so good. Wow. And are there times are there times I want to take him by the neck and squeeze his <laughs> neck? Sure, but he's still my son. Mm-hmm. Right. I just want to say, uh, Steve, I, it, what you just shared brought tears to my eyes because I think that's exactly what we struggle with as children of God. And it's so funny how we can easily, everyone can easily believe that what mm-hmm. Adam did has affected the entire race. And yet we struggle with what Christ did. And, he, and as you said, his, uh, what he did was far greater far greater, far greater. The only only equal in that uh, algebraic expression is that a, the act was the same, not the value. One man did an act that affected everyone and Christ did an act that affected everyone. But his act out, out, out. And can I just say this? You know, in Romans, it says, and this is very important, it tells us that we, even before the law came, it says we were under sin. We didn't sin like Adam. It it wasn't our fault. We didn't do anything wrong. Get it? Here, this is very important. We didn't do anything wrong. And yet, because of what Adam did, we we're under sin. Okay, on the other side, we didn't do anything right. Mm-hmm. But because of Jesus, we are all made righteous. If That's one good. man can take us down, another man, the Son of God, takes us up. Okay, I'm done. Glory. That's good. That's good. Um, before I call on another person, I just want to say that, you know, it's not by merit. This is not meritocracy. It is exactly, it's not what you did yesterday. So it's what God, or it's what Jesus did. And so that made you righteous. So, that is so um, good, Steve. That is so, so good. Uh, uh, gosh, uh, uh, anybody wanted to kind of chime in? You could just kind of raise your hand. Uh, hello, Cynthia. Thank, uh, Chris. It's great to have you today. Javier. Uh, I saw Javier, and I saw Chris and Paula, and I thank Bob. Yeah, so well, I know, uh, I'm going to ask Javier to go first, if that's okay. Okay, sure. uh, two points. Uh, first, uh, some people uh, believe, yes, I accept uh, the, uh, what Christ did in the cross, and all my sins are forgotten, forgiven. Uh, but they think that from then on, they must not sin again, <laughs> that those sins will come after they accepted Christ. Uh, what, but what I understand is that Christ, for, for give, uh, the act of Christ, make us uh, the, the Father to forgive us all the sins, not in the present, in the past, in the future. Uh, that's one thing. <laughs> To, so that people have it very, very clear that all sins are forgiven. It's not that I sin and then I, I go back and I, I'm uh, afraid of coming back to God, Father, again. That's one thing. And another thing, uh, to be in a right relationship is because God loves us, loves us as he, his children. It, and the same way a father wants to talk to his child every day and to have the, the child close to him, God wants us for always to be close to him, to look for him, to have it present every moment. That's, oh, that's the two things I wanted to say. Very good, Javier. Oh, that yeah. is. Very good. That is. You that know, is I, stuff, Pastor Loretta and I believe that Jesus went through all the details of our lives. He went from our earliest childhood all the way until when we died. And he paid for all those sins because he's the alpha and the omega. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome thought.
Praise God. This is the beginning and the end. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to add? Uh, yes, I do. Um, that was what a what a terrific message. Um, thank mm-hmm. you, Pastor Loretta. Yeah. And uh, I we we I don't think we could hear enough about the message of grace. Really. Um, and I think it, it it's, it's difficult to operate in faith if we don't understand the message of grace. And what, what was interesting this morning, I was reading, you know. I was reading from the word and my eyes fell on um, Romans 6, 23 for the wages of sin is death. And I've seen that for like a million times. I've heard it preach from the pulpit and you, you know, you, you, you feel condemned when you see that, right? For the wages of sin is death. Then, But the gift of God, mm-hmm. sin pays out in wages. God gives gifts. We couldn't ever do anything to earn um, so, something from God. Everything that He gives us, we don't deserve. We couldn't. We couldn't work hard enough to get it. That's why He gives us gifts. Only sin pays pays wages. God gives gifts, and I like. I've seen this like thousands of times, and, I, and that just stood out to me. Wow! You know, He gives gifts. Sin pays wages. So, you know, in Chris, the sense, you've that, just that given was, me another sermon. I get all my good sermons <laughs> for you. Gifts and God wages. That's right. You God doesn't me pay wages. He doesn't. He doesn't pay you anything. You mm-hmm. you, and you could you could jump up and down and and try and be as good as possible, but you, in your own goodness, will never be able to, you know, say, "Hey, God, I've I've been good today." What are you going to do for me? And it's not about that. It's Jesus made us good. Yes. And, then, and another thing, you know, Romans, Romans 7, 4 is one of my favorite um, passages. It says, by his body, we are dead to the law. And the law is the strength of sin. By his body, right? It's his body. It's what he did for us. We are already dead to the law. He neutered sin. He neutered the strength of sin by his body. He, he, you know, and it, I've been so impressed because he outwitted the devil. <laughs> Amen. You know, he put Jesus on the cross. Jesus became our sin. He neutered sin. And the devil's probably saying, what, what just happened? You know, <laughs> what just happened? You know, that's great. He, that's he, great. He, he faked him out, faked him out, <laughs> you know. And the devil thought that he had him, and he faked him out. He says, and then bam, he condemned sin in the flesh. Right there, he condemned sin in the flesh. Wow. So yeah, that's that's my that's my take on it. The way that God, sin pays wages, and God gives gifts. And uh, there's only one thing about the message I didn't understand: uh, the, the algebra. I hate math. I don't like algebra. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> didn't understand that, but it, that's, what that's why you're message. a liberal arts major, right? There you go. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So sorry, Javier. Sorry, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't understand that stuff. But Chris, Loretta, next time, uh, next time, Chris, I'll do something that has nothing to do with math. I have to tell you, that's all of my knowledge of math. So I was just trying to impress the mathematicians in our group. <laughs> No, but thank you. Well, thank you so much for your message today. I don't, we can't hear enough about the message of grace, you know. You. And somewhere in the Bible, Paul says, I pray that you all grow in grace. You know, I saw that and I said, you know, teach me, Holy Spirit, how to grow in grace, you know, grow in grace. OK, so anyway, that, that's it. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I got another message from Chris. <laughs> Sin page wages, but God gives gifts. I'm, you're going to hear me preach it. That, that'll be a book. I'll I'll give you a, a honorable mention in it, Chris. <laughs> well, Pastor, I have to say the thing that Javier and it was wonderful what Chris said. I like the part where he said he neutered sin. <laughs> 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 I, well, I'm not going to say, say what I'm thinking, but anyway, praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> but Javier, you know, what he said is, and this is very important, uh, and it's, it's in tandem to what Chris just said, and that is 
if you blow it, okay. Girl and Grace. Okay. Um, okay. You know what? Paul blew it. Remember the whole situation when he and Barnabas, they went to this city. They were like getting ready to duke out. A whole ministry was torn apart because of that. But he's a man of grace. So anyway. It, it, is, a, it is a misconception that uh, Javier cleared up. Yeah. Um, for example, uh, let's say you're talking to somebody that kind of wants to come to church. He said, I'm a sinner. I, I, I don't think I need to get myself right before I go to church. But that is so not true because you're made righteous. As long as you have that relationship, with God, you're righteous. God has been waiting for you all this time. I mean, so if there's somebody that wants to come to church and they feel like, oh, I, I'm a, I shouldn't come because I, I don't feel right. But you are right. So you're righteous because of God. So we can certainly take that stigma away. Of course, we all experience this for ourselves as a, gosh, ooh, I hope I hope God doesn't see me today, you know? <laughs> I have so, to say that, something. I have to yeah. say something to Anna Marie. You're feeding that cat too much. But you know what? God's not going to hold it against you. You're covered. You're still righteous. El gato gordo. <laughs> You're abusing that cat yeah. with food, but God has forgiven you. Uh, el gato es demasiado gordo. But to get back to what Steve was saying, you know, that's true about how you, you feel. It's not about your feelings. And there's a scripture in um, St. John, or, uh, the first and second John, where it says, if your hearts condemn you, God is greater. Yes. Amen. You know, so yeah. Paula has, I think, raised her hand. Bob raised her hand. And I believe Terry raised her hand. I may be wrong. So whoever wants to go first. Yeah, please. somebody go first. I'm not going to just kind of. Well, I'll don't, just jump don't in because, your head because if you scratch your head, we call on you. <laughs> I'm jump jump in because Pastor Loretta uh, just said something that I was going to refer to. What a wonderful message, by the way. Thank you. That's something that I need to hear every single day. Mm -hmm. And right before I jump into the scripture, it's so apropos because of Christmas time that we, you know, we feel we've taught our children, we've heard it all our lives. If you're good. You can get this gift. You can get that. If you're not good, you're going to have coals in, you know, under the tree. And so that, and it's Christmas and it's about Christ, but that is so unchrist like. Yeah. And that's what we've heard all of our lives. So we, you know, I don't know where it started or how it started, but I know Christmas, that's a big thing. You, you know, you start late, you start in November trying to be good. You, you <laughs> because, you know, Christmas is around the corner and you just hope everybody forgets what happened up until November. And, you know, it's so, it's such a hard work to try to be good when that's not at all what God has said. And it brings me to this scripture that I've been reading. I've been kind of stuck in first second and third Johns for about a couple of months in um, walking in love. And I must admit, you know, when I felt like I didn't walk in love, I felt guilty. I felt condemned. And I felt like, you know, I, I failed. And I wasn't thinking about the grace that covers me that no, you didn't fail. And one of the scriptures that I, I would go back to as I was stuck in these Johns, first, second, third Johns was an 18. It's first John, I believe it is 318. My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. So I'm trying to practice real love, but this is the only way we'll know we're living truly living in God's reality. It's also the way to shut down deliberating self-criticism even when there is something to it. For God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. So after having studied that and heard your, your word today, I realized that that scripture is about grace. Paula, that, Paula, can you reread that, please? 
please re- yes. read that. And, uh, and what translation is that? The message. Okay. And so it's uh, 1 John 3, 18 through 20 or so. My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we'll know we're living truly, living in God's reality. It's also the way to shut down deliberating self-criticism, even when there's something to it. For even God, when there's something to it. Even when there's something to it. For God is greater than our worried hearts and knows more about us than we do ourselves. Mm, and that's so good. ministered to me because... You know, that even when there's something to it, it's like, uh oh, you know, I, I, it's something to it. It's something. But God's heart, you know, it, it's greater than our worried hearts. And, and that grace, that's, that's that grace that covers me, even though I feel so crippled by having failed. But God is saying, I don't don't worry about that. My grace has covered you. And so. That's what I just wanted to share because that scripture used to bother me like I didn't know what it meant. But your message today clears that up for me in that wholly, completely. Very good. Can I I say something? Can I add something? (laughs) Oh, yes. Um, Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I've had the same, the same problem, Um, you know, and, and this whole righteousness thing, right? Because of my past and stuff, and I don't feel righteous. And um, I'm reading from First John three seven. It says, "Little children, little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous." And I thought about that, you know, and I think, you know, the world and like, like for me too, right? We've been practicing sin our whole lives. You become what you practice, and you get better at it while you practice it and the holy spirit seemed to be saying just practice you know uh, like as a, I, I used to be a musician and you get better when you practice it and here it says whoever practices righteousness is righteous just by practicing it is righteous right so even if you don't you're just saying even if you don't get it right start practicing it you've been practicing sin stop that turn it around start practicing righteousness and you, you grow in it as you practice it, right? So, you know, you just act, mm-hmm. act on it. I mean, basically, I think he's saying act on it, right? I'm working on a blog, Pastor Larry, by, by the way, uh, uh, about this, right? You need to act on his word, right? And practice that's it, it. That's it. That's it, Chris. If I can jump in, you know, and just so for those who are listening, just in case they don't understand, um, you know, We have a shared knowledge, so we can say certain things and it makes sense. But there are people who are unchurched who want what we have, but they don't understand a lot of times. And I just want to say that practicing righteousness is real simple. You know what made Abraham righteous? He believed God and God counted it as righteous. What is practicing righteous? Believing what God has said to you. God said to Abraham, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And it says in the fourth chapter, even when the thought, we are talking about thoughts, even when the thought says, there is no way in the world this is going to happen. You've missed all of your opportunities. You've blown it. You've blown it. And yet, he said, yep. And then he looked at Sarah. He said, so sorry. He looked at all. He put, checked down his list. And he go, well, and he looked at Sarah. And, and she was past the childbearing age. But even when she was childbearing age, she couldn't bear children. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. And so he's, he's, he didn't deny these things. But what he did was said, I deny your rights to rule in my life. 
Practicing righteousness is believing God. And so he said he believed God. He was strong in faith. He believed God, judging God faithful. If God said it, I don't care how bad the situation looks. If God said it, grace will make it happen. Hmm. That's good. You know, these these afterglows are so good. I just wanted to say, Pastor... That, you know, what Chris said, that practicing righteousness, that's it. Just, yeah, that's it. That's so powerful. Just, you know what? You blew it. Now, do you believe what the devil did or do you believe what Jesus did? That's righteousness. That's good. Do you believe that uh, you blew it and now you're back and you're unrighteous? Or do you believe that whatever Jesus did, he took care of it all? What the Bible says, what made Abraham righteous is because he believed God. That's all we're asking you to do. Steve, who's next in our queue? Joseph is next. And a good word, uh, BBF. <laughs> Love you much. Love you all much. But she's my BBF. You know how that who's goes. Next? Who's next, Steve? Joseph is next. Go, I Joseph. Just- uh, Pastor Laura, thank you for that. Um, I, the interesting thing is in uh, Romans 5, right? So I was, the whole time I was thinking, oh, wretched man that I am, when you were reading <laughs> that, right? And then I thought about it and I was like, wow, you know, this is Romans 5. And two chapters later, Paul, what you shared with us was he went through like self-examination, self be I mean, it, you know, <laughs> it, it, it warring in my, in my members. And right at the end where he reaches his climax, uh, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I just, through Jesus Christ. I just, yeah. I just blew me away that even with all yeah. the, the, being the co-author with the Holy Spirit, you know, he was, He's just putting down the verses in in, I, in his I'm Bible, glad you and just that up. I don't, and then two 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 chapters later he's beating himself up. So he's so real, you know. Just I'm like, glad you brought that up, Joseph. Yeah. I've heard a lot of preachers say that the seventh chapter of Romans was Paul before he was saved. I've read it and read it and yeah. read it. Let me tell you something. What he was expressing is, I think, something we all go through. You know, we want to do this, but we end up doing that. Amen. We shouldn't do this, but we do it anyway. And Paul went through that. The great apostle Paul. And then, as you said, who will deliver me from this body of death? And that was a rhetorical question. He answered. He said, I thank God through Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, then he says, and then he says in the next verse, Therefore, there is no condemnation condemnation. to me. Amen. Amen. Yeah, very good. I think Bob had his hand up way back there. Oh, we're going to let our elders say something? Hmm. Well, I never actually had my hand up, but boy, yeah, there's um, um, Chris isn't the only one with another sermon. I could I could do about three more sermons right now. Well, you may you may get a chance to do that. Bob, oh, no, least, I better not say that too loud. I guess we're, we're, I don't know. I, don't know. Uh, I may want to go on a, I may want to go on a vacation. Before extended vacation <laughs> between me and Chris. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it it was good. I got I got so caught up in it though. I, I forgot to run the spotlight feature and. and and I would find myself sitting here saying, well, pastor's talking. Why don't I see his face? Oh, I got to undo the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. You can, you can blame pastor Loretta. She had me so engaged. I just couldn't think about anything it's else. Her, Bob, I agree. Yeah. It's her fault. <laughs> she has a way of doing that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, everybody, oh. I'm, I'm getting ready to excuse myself. Uh, because my wife has put on a big pot of beans and I can smell them. And I am so hungry right now. I'm about to eat my fish. But they're not beans, sweetheart. They're legumes. They're lentils. Yeah, lentils, lentils. I got to ask Javier and, and Anna Marie, how's our daughter doing? Como esta nuestra hija? She is 
out of contact. She is traveling between the mountains in what they call the Inca Trail. Fuera de Inca. contacto, no me digas. Wow. <laughs> She's a much uh, teacher. She will have plenty of material on Sunday when she finishes the Inca Trail and she has access to internet again. She will publish it very uh, probably. I, I've got to tell you, if if Astro. any of you ever get a chance to go to Cusco and Machu Picchu, you should do it. There's no place on earth like Machu Picchu. It's beautiful. Pastor, I'm going to interrupt you. I just want to say to everyone, thank you for those encouraging words. Thank you, everyone. I want to hear from everyone. I think Terry had her hand up. And I just want to say to Terry directly, um, thank you for just um, uh, doing the prayer. I mean, oops, I kind of hit my hand there. But doing the prayer and just uh, uh, picking and, and allowing everyone to be free in the prayer. Thank you so very much for that. And uh, Steve, thank you for an excellent job. I always appreciate service. I always hear you getting everything done. And just to everyone, uh, Elder Bob, and always listening to her, to everyone, thank you so much. I'm going to leave, and I just want I want to say this before I do. I want to pray. For, I'm going to ask Pastor Larry. You know, when we have the word, we need to cover that word with the blood of Jesus, because yeah. immediately the enemy is going to come and try to steal the word from you. It's just the Bible. And I want your heart to be protected. Pastor, would you do that? I, I'm, I'm going to pray, but I have, a, I have a little prophecy here. Don't let the devil tell you that you're not righteous. He's a liar, and you can't believe a word he said. You've got to believe Jesus and that he has already paid the price for everything even sin. So consider yourself the righteousness of God, not by works or deeds, but by what Jesus has done for you. And tell the enemy to shut up. And if you must, just read him the word and watch what he does when he listens to what he's heard. Praise God. Amen. All right, Father, Amen. thank you for sealing this word you, with the blood of Jesus, sealing thank it into our hearts. Everyone. That the oh. enemy can never rob us of what we've learned. Thank you, Jesus. And we've learned that we reign in life yes. by righteousness. Condemnation does not give us the ability to reign. It right. robs us of the ability to reign. Mm. Grace gives us the ability to reign. In Amen. Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Love you all. Well, Love you, team, you all too. You are all amazing. You can, you can stay here as long as Steve is here, but I'm going to say good night. Well, good night. Love Love you all. Good night. Actually, this is it. Merry Christmas, and we all see you next week, okay? Yeah, yeah, see us at the Huggins house next week. Yeah. Love all right. It. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.